नमस्कार सो टू एंसर गोपाल इज वेरी सीरियस क्वेश्चन टू बिगिन एंड देन वी विल टॉक फर्दर फॉर टू एड्रेस एवरी वन to begin when the fetus comes in in contact with the, the soul which is requiring expression may happen at the time of conception but that link does not uh get expressed until later in the dyna- dynamic flow of the universe there is a weaving together an interwoven interconnectedness with all of life and all beings and in that interwoven interconnectedness the play of the creative forces goes on and in the play of the creative forces a soul needing expression will be drawn to the situation in which that expression can take place and the link to the situation the manifestation will occur but when the soul enters the body is a different question the soul may enter the fetus at any stage more likely towards the end where it feels uh, the need to embody and even then the soul may have difficulty if there is some resistance to physical embodiment may be a little reticent to fully embody in the new form though their karma draws them to that expression they may have reticence to embody to actually take the form they may stay in close contact but have reticence to take the form but eventually they need to come into the form so it depends on the eagerness of the individual consciousness to take embodiment but that consciousness will if not fully embodied be linked to the body of the new, newborn or of the fetus and will fully embody as time goes on most likely in the majority of cases before or near birth so it is not black and white that it is if there is a soul shopping around for the best body it can find like going with a shopping cart in walmart it is not like that there is a natural um interwovenness of life 
and naturally the soul is drawn naturally the circumstances arise because there is a need for them to arise the interwoven connectedness of of life itself and of all the living beings weaves together this synchronistic synchronistic uh, expression it is from the life of the soul wanting to take physical form from the lives of the people engaging and living in the world all together it forms a whole so it is not one thing that makes another the soul does not incarnate because there is an appropriate body nor does the body form because there is a need for the soul and yet both take place does it make sense Yes, Mother. Okay, good, good. And what is the second half of your question? It was that uh, um, when the soul uh, en enters the body, is there does it come in through Muladhara chakra, or does it yeah. is it just a general yeah. association? Yes. Hmm? That is a more complex question, but a simple answer is that when the soul enters the body it must enter all of the uh, to fully enter there has to be an alignment of the psychic being so it isn't that a soul enters at one place one chakra when a soul aligns in a physical structure that means that it awakens and manifests in the neurological patterns of that physical structure the dna and the rna become are already linked in the soul pattern and have formed the body with relationship to that expressed karma and the karma of the individual is linked in that body in the dna in the rna and then as the spiral of subtle body moves into physical body the spirit expresses in the subtle alignment and then gets embodied into the nervous system and the physical form so from spirit to subtle body to physical body there becomes an attunement an alignment and a harmony and then it blends as one so it isn't that one chakra or one kosha embodies no the whole being must embody there must be an alignment of the expressive nature of self the subtle body and the physical body all right mm -hmm. thank you very much bhavan right. so when that alignment occurs a being who has been finding existence on some subtle realm consciousness associated with what is a spirit what is this disincarnate being who embodies it is nothing but conscious being consciousness associated with a series of reactions of mind a series of reactions to past experiences that become the mental framework 
of an individual. And this basket of karma becomes the individuality, the uniqueness of that experience, experiential basket. There's all of these reactions from past experience. The sum total of it becomes the unique personality, which is witnessed by the consciousness. That consciousness draws itself, wraps itself around the experience of this unique sequence of events that have formed the personality and the identity of an individual I feeling. And so the Atman, the consciousness, the soul, the spirit is the witnessing essence that knows, experiences, and is associated with that unique set of experiences that have formed itself into an individual and an experience of individuality. When that individuality leaves the physical body... Mama, hmm. yes? Mama maybe you can tell something about sisters or women today in our society. Women like today, all right. But let me finish. <laughs> we have started a topic. This is the topic, all right? Okay, okay. So perhaps it can move other ways, but this is the topic we are on, all right? I think people will benefit from this topic. So so when, when it comes that a soul is associated with this individuality, that soul will come into the body that the vehicle that will allow for the greatest expression. So when you leave this brief lifetime, there is a suspension of the nervous system, a suspension of brain function, but the personality, the interactiveness, the accumulation of your sum of experience goes on existing. The things which were important to you, the people who were important to you, remain important to you. And you go on being, to one degree or another, conscious. For many people, it is a long sleep. Their consciousness does not survive without the brain function. But for others, they are awake in different realms after a time. And then they are drawn by these individual needs back to this physical earth for expression. And whether you are a man or a woman will depend upon what it is that you need to express. Perhaps you have been a man for many lives, but in that you have not found the balance and you are searching for some type of other experience so that you can grow to true knowledge and become a totality of being which can understand the depth of cosmic existence. So needing to have another experience, you may take feminine form because you do not fully understand it, having taken many male lifetimes. So a soul may go from one sex to another, from one race to another, from even a different animal forms to human forms, to experience the totality of life 
and come to a deeper understanding of self. And as you grow, as mind grows in magnitude, and your understanding of self grows, then you will find that there is so much um, for you to discover and know. And as your knowledge grows, your love grows, your compassion grows, your ability to know the deeper aspects of self grow. You become, as you begin to evolve and develop through any number of lifetimes, you become uh, less interested in the enchantments of the physical world and even of the mental world, the accomplishments, the power, the prestige, the money, it all seems to be not as important. And each lifetime you come in, you go through the stages of development from the child to the youth, to the adult, to the crone. But hopefully as you go through this, you will learn and you do it again and again, like that movie uh, Groundhog Day you know he lives the same day over and over and over again until he gets it right yes have you seen that movie yes groundhog day you know he lives he over and over he till he finally gets it right so you get to do the same you get to do it over and over until you get it right <laughs> So it's an opportunity to learn from your mistakes, to figure it out, to grow, to develop, and to this time have more depth, more connectedness. And when the yearning comes for deeper and subtler experiences, then the human form is required because the human form uh, allows for the self-reflection. If you are close to uh, mammals of different types, cats, dogs, uh, pigs, any animal, mammal, you will see that they have much in common with you. You both share animal bodies with a great deal of abilities. So you have a great deal in common as sharing in embodiment in animal bodies. But in a human body, there is the ability to self-reflect, to know your own self, to ask the question, who am I? To wonder about the nature of your own existence and the cosmos. So this reflective ability gives you the capacity to do meditation and to make an effort to know your deepest being, to find your way to truth. When the delights of the physical world and the accomplishments of life and the power and the importance you can gain doesn't seem to entirely fulfill you either by way of sorrow and suffering or by way of achievement until achievement is unimportant to you. You come to a place inside of you where you realize Life is a bondage. There is bondage of desire to, of your wants and your constant need to fulfill your safety, your well-being, to acquire what you need 
And on the other hand, the fear of losing what you have, the fear of death, the fear of loss, the avoidance of suffering. So these two qualities dominate everyone's life and they are a bondage. Life becomes a difficult process in which you are grasping and fearing, grasping and fearing. And when your self-reflection comes to the point where you begin to realize this and the trap you're caught in, then you become able to explore options. How do you opt out of the trap? How do you opt out of the suffering of the human condition? Because the suffering is in the grasping and the fearing. Because ultimately, you can't win. You are going to die as a physical person. You can't win the acquiring game. So how do you, how do you find a deeper self, a deeper sense of being that supports you, that you can connect with, that allows you to find a deeper connection to life and allows you to step outside of this condition of living in a human body or in an animal body of any kind. The way out involves deep self-reflection, deep inner searching for knowledge, for truth, for love, for the sense of self that is not bound by the senses, not bound by the experience of the body. And through your meditation practice and through your deep inner self-reflection, you can come to the awareness of the subtle layers of the mind the koshas, where you will find that infinite sense of self, that infinite sense of being, where you find that there is a self that is not bound in the body, doesn't need to be afraid of death, doesn't need to be afraid of loss, doesn't need to acquire to be safe, to have all of the acquisitions. Where is that part of you which is beyond the need to acquire and the fear that is contained in the need to avoid suffering? When you, in your deep contemplation, find that sense of self that is beyond these limitations, there are words that go with it. Love, gratitude, wholeness of being. There is a bliss that has no forms a love that is not bound by time and place and form. In that you are whole. In that you are beyond the realm of suffering. For the human suffering of grasping and fearing is situated in the feeling of I, I as opposed to thou, I as separate from everyone and everything else. And this I feeling, this ego, 
is rooted in identity of your self-aware beingness, your de- self-aware consciousness and intelligence, rooted in its identity with having a body, having five senses, and you become so identified with the body that you become, I am this body. I am all of the emotional and mental experiences I have. Therefore, I am limited and I can be hurt and I can achieve. And you're always striving to find that happiness. But when you come back to yourself, when you begin to move out of that I feeling that's identified with the body, and you begin to find yourself as being, as love, as truth. When you begin to find the Atman, the self-aware, intelligent being that is knowing everything you experience, that is hearing, seeing, touching, that hears this talk, that beingness that knows, that witnesses everything, the joy and the pain, when you connect with your own being, you are outside of the realm of duality. You are outside of the realm of I and thou. You are outside of the realm of separation that causes the fundamental pain of human existence. You are deep in love that is unconditional, that is your own essential nature. You want to be loved You want to be accepted. You want to be connected. You don't want to be separate. These are natural human feelings. But the separation, the isolation, the pain of duality is the illusion. Because in reality, there is only one Self, there is only one infinite love. There is only one divine knower, one truth. Embodied in all the forms, colors, and experiences of this world. You are more than your experience of what you see, what you hear, what you think, what you feel. You are separate from that. You are the one who knows, the one who is boundless. Many bodies you have seen, many eyes you have seen through, many different types of experiences you have had. You're the same one who was a little girl, a little boy. You're the same one. You haven't changed. The body has changed, but you haven't changed. And when your body is old and frail, you will be the same one. And when the body fades away, You will be the same, for your true nature, your Atman, is unchanging. Your true self is immortal. Your true self is whole, is complete, is not separated in dualities. And you are very fortunate to have the opportunity in this life to come to this knowledge and this realization 
and to step out of ignorance into truth. This is the opportunity you have. And though you study in your training and you learn certain knowledge, that knowledge is only a, like a, uh, what are those boards that swimmers use? You know, uh, a diving board to, to lift you up so that you can dive deep into your own soul where the true knowledge abides inside of you. The true love abides inside of you. It's your birthright, and each of you are able to make that connection. And that journey to make that connection, to understand the deep truth, that is the great adventure of human life. That is the journey you are on. So take this opportunity of this training you receive to receive the wisdom that can give you understanding, that can help you to go deeper. And as you go deeper, as you surrender your beliefs, your concepts, your ideas, you allow that divinity to fill you, to be you, as you melt into it. As you melt into it, you realize the true potential of your life, and you find the doorway out of your suffering of your human condition. And it is through that also that you can give back to all the beings in this world. Do you have any questions for me? No, I, I was just wondering if there's something you can tell for uh, for today, women in the world today, but our women's role. So, but is it too much a question? The women's role today. This is a something time of about something. You have told many things, but if, yes. you, if you want to a little continue, so, a little something. This is the time. Okay. This is the time for women to rise in their power in the world. It is the time for women to become. leaders, the feminine is rising in this world to leadership, to strength. The power and nurturance of women is much needed and will be much needed in the near future. Women have 
in the physical form of the feminine. Great strength and power the, to endure, to endure pain, to endure suffering, to endure through hardships. Women also have the great strength to protect and to nurture. For women are the bearers of children and the protectors of the young. And they can be fierce in that. It is time for the strengths of women to be in the world as this is a period of the end of patriarchy and the rise of a society in which there is equality between men and women. The world changes But remember always your unchanging self. And the self is neither male nor female. The self is an undying witnessing consciousness. Though you inhabit a female form, you may have had many male forms. You may have had the forms of different animals. You are not the form you inhabit. You are the infinite being, the self, who abides in that form. And you have great potentiality in your human form, in your inquisitive mind, to know your own self. I think that is sufficient for today, all right? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.